some reason. So I'm okay as long as I can hear you guys and communicate with you. I'm I'm okay. I'll okay. stay on my phone. But it asks okay. us to register early when you when you yeah. there's a register. Yeah, I, I yeah I used a different platform and it was. Hi, Angela. Angela's on. Angela. It was not a good idea to do that. So I apologize to y'all. I won't do that anymore. I'm not oh, going no, to. You're fine. That's you're okay. Okay. Okay, Michelle, you ready? I'm ready. I lost you guys. I can't see you anymore, but that's okay. But I am ready. Wow. You. You. That's, that's okay, though. Hmm. I'm here. If you can hear me, I can see the screen. Can you see the screen? And that's what's important. Yeah, yes. we can hear you. And I'm All sorry. right. Do you want me to just go ahead and start, Phyllis, or do you have uh, an opening? Uh, well, I think everybody here knows us. I think it's uh, all patients, but I will. I I will right. go ahead and introduce. I, can, uh, I got uh, it. Go ahead. I'm really happy to see everyone again. Welcome to Notary Gals. Um, if you don't have pen and paper handy, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and grab both because I have just a few slides that I want to share with you. We're going to, what I'd like to do today is go through all of the slides and then um, we'll take the slide down have our cameras up uh, and interact with each other and then I'll take your questions. Um, I, that's how I want to start out. I might change my mind midway. If you do have questions, if you would, go ahead, type them in chat. Um, and Phyllis, if you can read those off um, and Phyllis will handle the questions. But yeah, if you have questions along the way, either jot them down or go ahead and ask them. But we'll, we'll keep it easy. Um, I think everyone knows my name is Michelle Riley. I'm coming to you from the great state of Alabama. Our topic today is affordable insurance for notaries, signing agents, and their families. Um, I attribute this title. I got this from um, Phyllis. Phyllis, are you going to say something? Uh, my name is Phyllis Trailer. For those of you who don't know me, and this is a notary gal's presentation. Uh, this is uh, I'm the second half of notary gal's. Uh, Michelle is the first half, and she is going to be doing her presentation, like she said, on the on the insurance. And the reason why uh, I asked her to do it is because I recently purchased some insurance for myself and my son from Michelle, and it was just so affordable. I mean, I was like, wow, blown back. And I'm like, you know what? We need to share these opportunities with other, with other notaries so that they know that this is available. Because I knew, I, you know, you hear about it, but you never know who to talk to. And so now we have Michelle here who can share this information with us. So, and I can attest, I am a customer. And you know, you got, you guys know, I don't bring anything to you unless I, I can feel comfortable with you guys uh, learning about it and participating in it. So uh, I'm not just talking the talk, I'm also walking the walk. Okay, Michelle, back to you. And thank you. And um, I want you to know that we're, Phyllis and I are treating this as an educational presentation. Um, there is nothing for you to sign up for um, today, um, but we really want to educate you on what is out there. And then you decide if this is something that works for you. Um, again, I am in Alabama. Um, back in 06, I started my notary business here in Alabama as a mobile notary and signing agent. And then um, my path really closely mirrors Phyllis's path in that in 2013, I started training notaries here in Alabama. Now, once I got bonded and my E&O commission, 
because of my curiosity, I had a ton of questions. And so I kept calling the NNA, who I bought my policies from back originally. And then when I switched over to Notary Rotary for my ENL, I kept peppering them with questions like, well, what does this mean? And how does this protect me? And through that process, I learned so much. I said, you know what? I want to share what I've learned and I want to um, sell these products myself. And so I'm also an independent insurance agent. I do sell notary bonds in ENO, and I do it not only in Alabama, as you can see, the different states that I'm licensed in to sell those items. And then about a month ago, I started working with Aflac Insurance, you know the deck, Aflac. Um, and I now work with supplemental insurance products. And so that is what Phyllis and her son purchased. And I agree with her. I wish I had known about these products years ago. And so again, we're going to go through um, the bond. We're going to go through multiple things and then we're going to talk about them. The dilemma. The dilemma that I see for us as notary on. Hello. As, you may want to mute someone, um, Phyllis. The dilemma I see as notary entrepreneurs is that in the pursuit of success, many of us leave our nine to five jobs in order to pursue our dream of becoming an entrepreneur. And I'm sure some of you probably have done that and haven't looked back and it's worked out great. And it does for many of us. Um, but what I didn't realize when I left my nine to five the first time is that not only was I leaving behind a steady paycheck, I was walking away from important employee benefits that, um, that I needed. I hadn't thought about that. My focus was on, will I make enough notarizing signatures, closing loans to pay my bills? And when I did the math, the answer was, yeah, I think I can. Um, but as many of us know now, not only are we walking away from compensation, we're cash compensation, we walked away from non-monetary compensation. And what I mean by that, employee benefits. So we left behind the opportunity to purchase affordable medical insurance, dental vision as um, employees, part-time or full-time, we were covered under something called workers' compensation. And that's a federal program that says, hey, while your employees are at work, if they get injured or if they get sick and that sickness comes from the business, the business is responsible um, and has to pay for all of the medical bills and approved time off. Um, and so we, we left that as, as entrepreneurs. Many employers do offer short-term and long-term disability and then most offer affordable term life insurance and some offer whole life. So again, going out on your own as a mobile notary, a signing agent, it's exciting. It can be financially rewarding, but we shouldn't lose sight of the other pieces that we left behind at our place of employment. Why? Because we as notaries and as signing agents, we will make mistakes in our role. We do get sick. Unfortunately, some of us are involved in automobile accidents. We can get sued for those mistakes that we make in our role. And we can be injured at home, at family reunions, um, Wanda, when we're out walking, um, Phyllis, when you're rowing. And so we need to make sure that when these things come up, we have 
appropriate protection. And then keep in mind, those of you who still have children at home or a spouse, now hopefully if your spouse is working, you can continue to be covered under her or his benefit programs. But if, you're, if you don't have a spouse or if they don't have that insurance, um, that means they lose out on these, some of these benefits as well. And so this morning, I am going to go high level. I'm not going to get into the weeds today about um, some important reminders about our surety bonds. For those of you who are in states that require bonds, believe it or not, I believe there's at least 10 states that the notaries aren't even required to be bonded. We're going to touch briefly on um, errors and omission insurance, something that I call the sleeping giant, and then supplemental um, insurance. And yeah, I want to revise what I said earlier. If you do have a question about something that's on the screen, um, you can jump in and ask it. Um, and then if not, we'll take questions at the end. So if you're a patron of Phyllis's notary community, you should know fully what that bond does for you. Um, but there may be someone on here this morning who isn't a patron community, who's not a member of the uh, notaries for Alabama. The notary bond offers financial protection to the general public not to us as notaries, okay? That bond allows us to become commissioned. But more importantly, it is your individual promise to the state of Texas, to the state of Alabama, whoever commissions you, that you accept full financial responsibility for any mistakes that you made. So the bond is your promise. You are promising that if you conduct a notarization and your mistakes cause someone financial harm, you agree to own it and restore that person financially. And if you don't do it, all they have to do is simply contact the bond company, tell them what happened, and the bond company will pull, will send them a check to make them whole. And then they turn around and send you a bill that you must pay with the, back within a specified period of time. All right. A bond company is very much like um, an insurance company. And companies that big are hard to run from or hide from. Okay. So errors and omission insurance, this is why it really is important to make sure that you have at minimum notary errors and omission insurance. It provides protection to you for inadvertent errors, mistakes, or things that you don't do. Um, and it protects you against false accusations. So an error is you are conducting a notarization and you do it wrong. An omission is you should have taken a certain step in the notarization process, but you forgot about it, all right? You may have, you always, you always remember to administer the oath when it's a jurat, but this one time you forgot to administer the oath and that resulted in someone being able to get out of a contract. That would be an example of an omission. Notary e &O also protects us against false accusations. It is not uncommon for someone to accuse a notary of doing something wrong. So that's why it's important to have notary errors and omission insurance. We, when you have a policy, a notary E&O policy, you're guaranteed 
legal assistance to defend you against claims or to settle claims on your behalf. So that money, those of you who went with the NNA's $25,000 recommendation, that money is set aside by the insurance company with your name on it. And so at any time where you, it, it comes to light that yes, you made a mistake, they're gonna pull money from that $25,000 and pay off whoever was harmed. But the piece that many of us forget about is, especially false accusations, your insurance company agrees to appoint a lawyer that is gonna fight in your defense. So you can keep doing, being a notary, keep closing loans, running your business. You don't have to fight for yourself. You won't have that with the bond. You with me? When you are falsely accused about something or someone files a claim against your bond, it's left up to you to say, oh no, that's not how it happened and that's not fair. With the E and O, you get you've already paid for by paying the premiums each month or by buying the policy for the E and O, you end up getting legal representation. And that is so important. I'm going to pause in a moment to see if there are questions after the next slide. Again, those of you who are part of the Notaries for Alabama community and Phyllis's patron community, you have already heard about the differences between notary E&O insurance and signing agent E&O insurance. And so notary E&O insurance is focused on your role as a notary, notarizing, I'll say all documents um, that are out there. However, E, signing agent E&O protects signing agents when they're handling real estate related closings, whether it's a refi, someone buying property, selling property, doing a loan modification, anything involving real estate, you need additional coverage because that notary E&O policy is not going to get into whether or not you got all the signatures, whether or not every page was initialed properly. Oh, it, the date was wrong. Um, the documents weren't returned in a timely manner. All of those could result in um, a loan not closing on a, in a timely manner. Your notary ENO, that legal defense won't be there for you unless you took the extra step to obtain signing agent ENO coverage. So again, we're the notary gals, we want to make sure that you're clear about that. I'm going to pause here to see if there are already questions. All right. So the sleeping giant, those of you who are my age or older, I am sure you have heard something like, let sleeping giants lie. Just let them be, let a sleeping giant lie. Don't, don't stir the net, don't, don't stir the pot. Um, this, I, you know, it's just, uh, um, depiction of a sleeping giant. Um, we see here, I don't know if you could see my arrow, these are regular size humans mounting a defense. But when you look at the size of the giant related to the small planes and tanks, um, there really is no competition at all. And the sleeping giant reference came from Gulliver's Travel, that old classical story um, about a giant who showed up um, somewhere where there were a lot of little people. 
he was asleep. They tied him down with strings. They're like, yeah, he's fine. We're going to tie him down so when he wakes up, he can't bother us. Um, and of course, when he woke up, he stretched, the strings popped, and they had a problem on their hand. Um, in 1941, a Japanese admiral made the comment that after they bombed Pearl Harbor, they realized that they had awakened a sleeping giant, the United States. And while they did drop bombs and kill um, many uh, Americans in 1941, it was nothing in comparison to what America did in retaliation and dropping nuclear bombs on Japan. And so, again, that analogy, or um, I'll call it that, is we think we have a situation contained under control, but we later find out not so much. And so I identify, I feel the sleeping giant for us notaries and signing agents are signing agents who don't have signing agent E&O. Uh, you are gambling and hoping that this issue won't come up. And uh, you know what? In all honesty, for many of us, it won't be an issue. If you get training, if you are careful, um, you're going to catch most of your errors. And if you don't, the signing service or title company will. So there are some checks and balances there. But there are times, unfortunately, where um, mistakes do lead to um, lawsuits. The second bullet, personal versus business auto insurance. Um, I wish I could ask you to raise your hands. Um, but when you started your notary business, did you let your auto insurance company know that now you would be using your car, not for personal use, but for business use? You know that you were in that car a lot more now, especially those of you who are full-time. And so um, you're using it, so you're putting more miles on your car, you're putting yourself more at risk, being on the roads to accident. Some of you are even altering your vehicle uh, to incorporate being able to print on the road, which you know is a great service, but should an accident happen, your insurance company, depending on which one you are, the more reputable, larger, well-known ones, they may work with you, but legally, that personal policy on your automobile does not cover your, your business activities, your business driving. And so it's really important if you haven't done so already, reach out to them, let them know that you are now using your vehicle for business. And yes, it means that your premiums are going to go up a little bit. And it won't be, it's not astronomical, but go ahead, get the business coverage. So God forbid, if you're in an accident or um, your car gets broken into, you can file a claim and reap the benefits of that um, business coverage. Those of you who are working from your home, some of you are even having clients come to your home to conduct closings. Please know if they trip and fall on your porch or in your home or something gets broken, unless you notify your homeowner's insurance company or your renter's insurance company that you're conducting business, um, that incident may not be covered and probably won't be. If there is a flood, if there is fire in the home and your computers and your uh, laser printers with two drawers that you spent a ton of money for, you may you will not be able to get that replaced at the level that you would want to get it replaced. 
And so I want to encourage you, even those of you who have brick and mortar offices, to conduct your notary businesses. You want to make sure that you don't look to the notary E&O insurance to protect you. It won't. It's just going to protect your notarizations. That's it, or your um, professional duties as a signing agent. You need to speak with a licensed insurance agent about business owner policy and general liability insurance. Uh, Michelle, can I just make a comment right in here? Of course. This is excellent information that I did not have when I first started. And I encourage you guys to get that insurance because thank God. I mean, I think about all the businesses, services that I was offering when I was riding around San Antonio and surrounding areas. And like when I traded in my vehicle, I had over 200,000 miles on it. So I was doing all of this driving around, doing business without this extra insurance, you know, and I, I didn't know. So this is great, great information. And you know, take advantage of it. I mean, these are, this is, you know how I, I, I often say this is golden, this is golden, you know, so, so take advantage of it. Cause I wish I would have known, you know, I was, I'm, I'm just blessed that nothing happened to me while I was out there driving around or I didn't have any accidents or do anything. Even when I had my own office, you know, and even having people come to my house to get things done for business. You know, I had homeowner's insurance, but not any business insurance for my home. So you guys, please, please take take heed, take good notes. I mean, this is this is great information. And and ask questions. Go ahead, Michelle. Thank you, Phyllis, for that. I'm thinking back to your car because I think. Um, yeah, I saw your car when I came to the notary conference and you had signage on your car. So it was clear that you were running a notary business. And so all it would take would have been your auto insurance adjuster to come out. Had there been an accident with your vehicle, they're going to take pictures of the car and they zero in on that. Oh mobile notary she's using it for business and folks i hear all the time insurance companies don't want to pay no they only want to pay what they're legally obligated to pay and so in that situation phyllis had you totaled your car and um, you didn't have that additional coverage um, the replacement value would have been far less now, I, for reputable insurance companies, I can't see them not paying anything at all, but you wouldn't get as much as you would have gotten under, if you hadn't upgraded to, um, if you had upgraded to the business coverage. So again, you'll hear people complain, my insurance company is no good. No, for most people, it's, they weren't complying with the policy requirements. And so if you're unsure, just pull out your policy or call your agent, ask them, you know, what does this cover? Does it cover me for my business or not? And what would it cost to upgrade it? All right, I'm leaving the sleeping giant and I wanna talk about supplemental insurance and remember at the beginning um, we talked about that non-compensation benefits that we leave behind with our nine to five jobs and i'm um, not discouraging anyone from doing it i did it but i didn't know there were other options i always thought you either got insurance from your employer or your only other option was to pay a ton of money to buy individual policies. And what Notary Gals wants you to know now is there are other options out there. 
Um, one option is accident insurance. Now, don't confuse this with auto accident. This has nothing to do with automobiles. It has everything to do with paying you cash when you get injured, when you have an accident and you are injured and you need medical treatment. That accident can be a car accident. It could be me walking around my home barefoot and stubbing my toe hard enough or dropping so something on it where I fracture or break a toe. Whatever, it could be me at the family reunion, okay? Barbecuing and getting burned. As long as you go get treatment from your doctor, a doc in the box, an emergency room, it has to be a reputable, of licensed facility, uh, accident insurance will pay you cash money. And you can use that money to either take care of your co-pays, co-insurance, or you can use it to pay your cell phone bill. Uh, most accident policies include hospitalization benefits. So if the accident is bad enough where they wanna keep you I mean, admit you for a day or two, it will pay out good money for that. And if you stay in the hospital for days or weeks or months, it continues to pay you benefits. Um, for diagnostic tests, MRI, CT scans, these policies will outline how much they pay you. All right, so that's accident insurance. Supplemental insurance also includes cancer insurance. Um, I am really concerned about cancer. I'm grateful in my immediate family, which would have been my parents who, um, they did not have cancer. My dad died of leukemia, which is a form of cancer. Um, but my brother and sister, thank God, um, We've not had it, but we do have aunts and cousins and extended family members who have been diagnosed with cancer. The most recent statistics, unfortunately, in America, one in two men will be diagnosed with cancer. One in three women will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in our lives. That is a change. So if you were thinking, man, it seems like everybody gets cancer now. Yeah, it's changed over the years. And so looking into this insurance is going to be wise. And for those of you who know there's that family history, I feel that cancer insurance is really an important consideration. Again, these policies pay you once your diagnosis, as soon as you get the diagnosis that you have cancer, you get a lump sum payment. And then as you go through your treatment of chemo, surgery, tests, bone marrow transplants, whatever you and your doctor decide, a cancer insurance policy will have that schedule of what they will pay you. All you do is let the insurance company that you choose for cancer insurance know, hey, look, I had um, this test done, this biopsy done, and then the money will come to you. Um, now with accident insurance, normally there are no waiting periods. As soon as you buy it, the next day it's active, you're covered. With most cancer insurance policies, there will be waiting periods, a period of time where, I um, mean, um, the one I'm most familiar with is the one I sell, there is a 30 day waiting period. So um, if I buy a cancer policy today, I know that I won't be covered until July 11th. Um, so if cancer shows up within those first 30 days, it won't be covered. Um, some policies also have what they call a pre-existing limitation, which means if I have breast cancer today, I may have to wait a year or two years 
before I'll be able to file a claim if my breast cancer comes back. So there's a misunderstanding by some, well, I already had cancer, I probably can't get it. Not true for every policy. There are some policies where when you're in remission and then down the road a few years later, it comes back, it can be covered and you will also get cash payments. The last one on this slide that I wanna talk about is critical illness insurance. This policy pays you cash benefits, cash money, when you are diagnosed with specific serious health conditions. What do I mean by that? Stroke, heart attack, coma. Um, there's, there's more. Um, stroke, heart attack, end-stage renal disease. Um, specific diseases. So it won't cover everything, just the ones that um, are listed in the policy. And so again, once you get the diagnosis, you let the insurance company know, they send you an initial payment. And then it pays out benefits while you're being treated for that condition. And then should it come back Later on, recur, the policy pays you additional benefits. I'm not at all implying that you need to buy all of these. What I am suggesting is you take a moment and you assess not only your personal health, but what's going on with your spouse, your children. These policies routinely will cover dependent children up to age uh, 26 under you, or you can just encourage your adult children to purchase or to sign up and you can pay the premium for them if you feel that your adult or ch child children won't, okay, uh, pay the premium. But you think about what everyone's needs are. You can buy a family policy, or you can buy individual policies. I'm gonna pause here. Any questions about the accident insurance, cancer insurance, critical illness insurance? Uh, I, I do have, uh, I just wanted to um, just make a statement about these type of insurance. I have, you know, like I, like I said before, I am blessed because I have like, three different types of insurance for myself that I don't have to pay for, you know, but these type of insurances that uh, Michelle is talking about are insurances that pay you, the individual, should something happen. And that's something that I didn't have. So God forbid, if uh, I get into a bad accident and end up in the hospital, I'm not gonna be able to make any money because I'm not gonna be able to work. You know, my insurance is gonna pay, the insurance that I have, it's gonna pay all my medical expenses, but I'm not gonna have any income coming in. And that's what I like about this, this type of policy is because if something happens to you, you still have some form of income coming in, you know, and I mean, you just never know. That's why they call them accidents. You just you just never know. And so that's why I was so excited about the policies. And I told Michelle, we have to share this with uh with as many people as we can. You know, the same with the the cancer or the critical illness. God forbid, you know, I have a heart attack or stroke or something. I'm not gonna be able to make any money doing that, uh, doing my recovery period. You know, just like my husband, my soon to be ex-husband, he had open heart surgery. You know, had we had this insurance, you know, he could have been covered and had additional income coming in during that period. So I just, you know, 
I had never heard of anything like that before. So that's why I'm just kind of emphasizing that point and what the difference is between this insurance and some insurance that you might already have. Am I explaining that correctly, Michelle? Because that's the way I understand it. You, you are absolutely right. And while you were talking, Phyllis, she reminded me of someone, we won't say their name, who is a notary signing agent and is doing closings right and left. And this person um, had a serious fall recently and broke their hip. This person, as soon as that happened, they are unable to do the loan closings, got to clear their calendar, reach out to, um, you know, their, the schedulers, I can't do it, I can't do it. And now this person is not going to be able to do loan closings or general notary work for an extended period of time. You know, they've got to focus on getting better and that income stops immediately as self-employed individuals. And um, those of us who are 50 or older, it, it becomes more real to us, okay? It really does. When I fall now, you know, used to 40 and younger, I'd fall down and laugh and tell my friends about it. Now when I fall down, I'm down for a moment and I'm like, okay, did I break anything? Um, so this way you're protecting, you're able to pay the rent still, keep your cell phone on, um, and hopefully not lose everything you have worked for up until that time. Believe it or not, was there another question? All right. Believe it or not, with um, under supplemental insurance, you can now even get dental insurance. Uh, Michelle, right. very quick. I'm sorry. Um, Wanda did have a question. All right. Go ahead, Wanda. Thank you. I'll put a couple of them in the chat. Uh, however, the loan signing coverage, I'd never heard of that. So I didn't know there was a difference. So uh, that's that speaks volumes. And then when there is a, file, a claim filed on your E&O and you have to pay it back, how, do you pay back all that was paid out to the person? Good question, Wanda. The only time you have to, and I didn't make this distinction in my presentation, so I'm glad you asked. The only time you have to pay anything back is when you don't have insurance. Okay. Okay. So if all you have is the notary bond, yes, you have to pay back to that surety company or insurance company everything that it, um, they paid. Now in Texas, your bond is only $10,000. So hopefully if you get sued and you only have the bond that the signer only wants 5,000 from you or 6,000 or up to 10,000 then you are required to pay back the full 10,000. But with notary E&O insurance and signing agent E&O insurance, you don't have to pay back anything. And in that scenario, Wanda, because you have insurance, the bond company doesn't have to do anything. So you still keep that full $10,000 bond and any monies that go out, come out of your E&O policy, and no, you do not have to pay that back. Oh, so it sounds like I need to get signing agent coverage. Yes, if Although you I haven't, had, I haven't done a lot, but still that's something I need to look at for the future. And, yes. then, and I, I'm just giving you all of it one time. And then also, is there an age limit on the uh, insurance that pays you why you can't work? Um, the act, there is no age limit on the accident. Um, I think it, let me back up. It depends on which company you go with because Aflac is not the only company that sells supplemental insurance. I was going to talk about that in a bit. There are um, the most, the key players are Aflac, Colonial Insurance, and um, 
although I don't know if Colonial does it directly. So okay. I only know that Aflac is a company that will sell direct to you. Mm -hmm. um, the others you might have to go through an employer or an ins a local insurance agent. Okay. okay. And for your um, signing agent insurance, wind up before you spend money on that, I'd like for you to call me and because I don't like selling signing agent e o insurance to signing agents who are not actively you doing closings. Believe it or not, there are a lot of notaries out there with notary e o insurance, a hundred thousand, half a million, a million. And when I speak to them, they aren't even using it. And so I recommend that you get notary signing agent e o if you are a signing agent and you are actively performing loan closings. If you're thinking about it, if you're planning on doing it and you're not doing it, wait until you are because it is much more expensive than notary e o it's about twice as expensive i'm doing them sparingly i haven't i don't have a continual trail okay. it's then, just let's, then let's talk offline about whether or not you should make that purchase now or if you should focus on purchasing some supplemental insurance instead thank you i appreciate that yeah, and that's why, folks, I am not, notary gals, we're not here to say we think you all need all of this. Each of your situations are going to be different. Okay. Uh, Michelle. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, Angela had a, uh, a couple of questions. Good. Okay. Her She made a comment. She said she could have. Oops, I am so sorry, you guys. <laughs> Okay, so Angela said, could have used this when I had my hip surgery, had to pay out of pocket for home care. Wow. And yeah, home care is usually, um, that that's something that's definitely covered. Okay, and then she said, she said, do these supplemental coverage, coverages require a physical exam? Good question, Angela. The accident does not. Um, none of hang on. None of them require a physical exam to be covered. However, you will answer medical questions, and so um, the way it works for me with Aflac, I sell these over the phone. I fill out the application. I ask several questions depending on whether you say yes or no. It could mean you aren't eligible. An example of someone who is not eligible would be um, someone with some real serious health issues. And forgive me for not getting really specific, but keep in mind this is being recorded and we don't want to put folks' health information out there on the internet. And so what one, I don't want you to feel like, oh man, I already have a diagnosis. I probably won't be covered. Don't assume that at all. Because keep in mind, that's where we might just put a pre-existing limitation on you so that you may have to wait a year or two before you can file a claim and get the money. But at least after a year, something happens you're clear. But yeah, we do not require physical exams um, with AFLAC for any of these covered supplemental coverages that we're going over. Did Angela have another question? No, I just wanted to add that, you know, uh, I'm not in the best of health, but I was able to get covered. So, and you know, Michelle asked a bunch of, because I wasn't going to try it first, and Michelle was like, well, let's just try. Let me just ask the question. That's how unsure I felt, you know. So she will ask you the questions, and, you know, 
or any anyone that you choose, you know, they'll go through a series of questions. So, I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to to try. But I got I got covered. So, yeah, it is. It's quite reasonable. Um, they're not expecting you to be in perfect health. So again, I don't want anyone to be discouraged from applying. Um, when it comes to life insurance, um, I might, someone may want to be covered for $200,000 of life insurance, but because of their health, I'll say, you know what, based on your health, I'm pretty sure we're not going to approve you for $200,000. Let's try $100,000 though, or $75,000 of life insurance and will be approved for that, okay? So there is for the, um, definitely for the life insurance, we don't require an exam. And Angela, you're right, because with whole life individual policies, that might be required. Um, with this, we do ask questions. There is underwriting where underwriters at the insurance company might reach out to your doctor's office, might request medical records to see, to get a better understanding of your current health before approving it or before declining. Um, but again, with dental insurance, um, there's a dental plan. Now it is a supplemental dental. So it's not a very um, rich plan that is going to work like some of the dental plans you may have had in the past. But with this one, there are no annual deductibles. You go to any dentist that you want. But in the policy, there's a schedule that says, hey, when you get a cavity, this is the amount we're going to send the check to you, not to the dentist. There are benefit waiting periods with the dental insurance that I sell. And they are lengthy. They're not going to pay benefits. So, hey, if you today, let's say today you break, um, you're eating lunch, you chew down on something hard, you, broke, you break a tooth, and then you call me Monday and say, Michelle, um, yeah, I'm going to need to get into the dentist. I need dental insurance. That, what happened today was before the effective date. And so no, that broken tooth is not gonna be fixed. The way insurance works, you need to be covered today in order for you to be covered going forward. Okay, that was a long way around me seeing it, but there are benefit waiting periods with the dental insurance. Um, but I need to go back to that accident policy. And I didn't know this, Phyllis, the accident policy that I sell has a clause that if you are eating, you break a crown, you can um, get reimbursed under that accident policy. And that I have done twice in my lifetime. And so that's really good. Okay, and also under the supplemental That is good, that is good especially for people with old teeth like mine. Mine too. Um, you can purchase term life insurance for you and your family members. You can also purchase whole life insurance. Term life continues to be um, less expensive than whole life insurance. You usually pay the premium for a set period of time. And then once you stop paying that monthly premium, the life insurance goes away. So if you haven't died, you're out of that money. Whole life insurance lasts a lifetime. I shouldn't say forever. I should have said lasts a lifetime. And so, um, and then whatever you, if you buy a $10,000 policy, um, it does accrue cash value. It generates interest. You can borrow against it. So you may have started off with a $10,000 policy. And after a few years, now, oh, look, it's a $15,000 uh, 15, policy. And then if you need some extra cash to take care of 
uh, an emergency, unplanned emergency, you can contact the insurance company, ask for that cash value and use it. And then they work out a way for you to pay that back should you desire to do so. All right, so those are the six supplemental plans I wanted to introduce some of you to for the first time. Um, those of you who are familiar with these, I'm reminding you that they're out there. But again, what is unique is you don't need an employer anymore. You don't need to find an agent. You can go directly to at least the company that I know who offers it is Aflac and they offer it through their tier one department. And um, that's what I do. So for those of you who would like more information from me about the notary bond, signing agent ENO, notary ENO, um, all you need to do is shoot me an email at michelle at the bondlady.org or you can give me a call here in Huntsville. I am licensed in about seven different states, Texas. Um, for those of you who are patrons of the community, um, so I am doing business in Texas legally, um, as well as some other states that were list that's listed on the slide. Um, also, I am licensed to do business in um, every state except for New York for the supplemental insurance. So if you would like to receive a quote um, for a supplemental plan, just shoot me an email at mriley2 at aflac.com. All I need to know is your name, the state that you're located in, the best way for me to contact you, and um, I'll give you a call or we'll schedule time to talk. I'll be able to let you know what your costs are, email you a quote if you need some time to look over the brochures. And um, I know someone might, not, might be asking, so how much is it? It really depends, but individual costs, it varies by state. It can be, um, I haven't seen any accident policies less than $25 a month. Um, they may be out there because I haven't quoted at all 49 of those states yet, um, but for um, an individual, I've seen one as low as $25 a month for the accident. Um, so it is reasonable. And keep in mind your family members. Uh, yeah, I want to... I think for mine, for accident was like 39, 36. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you know, and y'all know I'm up there, so. I didn't get the, so I would imagine if we email you anywhere, we can still get you in the same phone number because I didn't get the, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And Wanda, let me repeat it. For the um, supplemental insurance, and again, there is no commitment. And I hope you can tell from my approach, I am not someone who does a hard sale. Right. I hate that pressure personally. Um, for supplemental, my email is M-R-I-L-E-Y-2, the number two, mriley2 at aflac.com. I got that one, okay. Okay, I'll put it in the chat too. Okay, okay. I'll put both the email addresses in the chat. Okay. And you're your right, though, still the same. It doesn't matter where it is. That's true. Okay, so I can call you if you're not, of course, you're not going to be available. And so I'll leave a message. You can, well, you know what? Yeah, um, that 256 number, I answer seven days a week. The eight, the toll free number is my office, you know, for Aflac. So yeah, I won't answer there. But Wanda, call me, email me. You'll get me. I don't see the other, I don't see the uh, two eight. Okay, Chat. my phone number. Okay. And you can call me for any of those 256-503-6595. Thank you, dear. You are welcome. 
So what other questions do you have um, about just insurance, whether it is the notary bond, notary errors and omission, signing agent, or supplemental? Those I know the most about. Uh, Michelle, do you have a, um, like a, a minimum you would recommend for purchasing the signing agent insurance? I don't have a number in my head, but this is what I do have in my head. I'm glad you asked this. I'm a member of many notary Facebook groups, and maybe some of you are too. I enjoy reading, finding out what's going on in different states. There is one popular thread that annoys me every time I read it. And it is a thread about signing H and E and O where notaries in different states are sharing and they seem to be very happy to share that they purchase a $1 million e and policy. Oh, you've seen it, Angela? Okay. That's a whole lot of insurance. Okay. There is this concept or idea if you purchase this million dollar policy, you're going to get a whole lot more signing agent appointments. It's going to make you look better than someone with just a 50,000 or a 100,000. Those policies are extremely, are very expensive. And in my professional opinion, unnecessary for many signing agents. Okay. Um, Wanda, when we talk offline, I want you and I to really talk about this because you shared with me before we got started today about your real estate business. So you are in a different category. So this is why it is not a one size fit all arrangement. If you find Wanda that your notary business is you're doing closing commercial loans. And I mean, you're doing loan signings full time, churning it out. Then I might recommend for you, and if you're a homeowner, and if you have a lot of property, then I might recommend a $500,000 or million dollar policy for you. But someone who just finished Phyllis's training, just got certified by the NNA, and is get, catching a few closing on snap docs, a $25,000 um, ENO policy or $100,000 policy may be enough for him or her for a while. So don't get caught up in that height, those threads. Um, that signing H and E, you know, I had it for a while when I was doing a lot of loan closings. It is very expensive. And um, the worst thing you can do is buy insurance that you can't afford and keep going. Phyllis and I do plenty of workshops, so I'm, I don't want to get into the other things that I talk about, about allowing there to be a break in your e &O coverage. Do not like, oh, I forgot my e &O. I didn't renew it on time and wait a week. It needs to be seamless. Once you buy it, as long as your commission, keep it renewed. And the best way to do that is to have enough coverage that you can afford to renew on time. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I see you, Denisha. Angela, really glad you joined us. Wanda, uh, yes. anything? Well, I was going to ask you, you mentioned the real estate. So you're saying there's some type of coverage for the situation that I just came across? Oh, good question. Um, I didn't hear enough of the situation to be able to answer you right now. So okay. 
We'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So yeah, protect your home, your assets, your car, your equipment. Someone in my notary group spent $700 on their brother printer. This was during the pandemic when they were scarce and those companies hiked up those prices. And you know, if a problem came up and that printer got um, water damage, fire damage, gotta protect it. Uh, I, I do wanna make a, a, just a quick statement is that uh, you know, I think it was very important and very good that Michelle mentioned to keep your e and insurance constant, you know, no breaks in it, you know, because I didn't realize how important that was until Michelle became my insurance person. So now when it comes to insurance, I don't even think about it because if, if I'm getting close to something, something needs to be done, adjusted or anything, Michelle will just shoot me a quick email. And, and I really love that. It's, um, to me, when you're in business, it's a good idea if you have a good working relationship with your insurance person, you know, because you can buy insurance from online from anybody, but then you don't really develop that relationship with your insurance person. And that's a that's an important relationship because you don't need insurance until you need it. And so, you know, when you have that relationship with somebody is, is looking out for you at the same time, that's just it's been very comforting to me over the years, you know, because that's just one less thing I have to worry about. You were um, speaking. Oh. If you're in the middle of your commission and you know you're not going to need to renew your E&O insurance for a while, do this one homework item. Print out your E&O policy and look for the section that says exclusions. And just read through that. You need to be familiar with what your policy won't pay. Because when something happens, you're going to be, oh, I got my insurance. You'll file a claim and get a denial. And you saying you didn't know is not gonna make them pay. And that will help you see, okay, when they said, when Michelle said that she wasn't making it, yeah. When you're dealing with a licensed insurance agent, it is very um, right, heavily regulated, the insurance industry. I have to keep a million dollars of e &O insurance just to be an insurance agent because if I provide you with wrong information just like you in a notary you can sue me okay I have to tell you what is covered what isn't covered so that you make an informed decision all right anything else before we wrap up We've been at it. Yeah. Time does fly fast, doesn't it? Oh, uh, this was very, very informative. You know, well, thank, I, you. I I thank you, Phyllis. Phyllis stays on me with the insurance. I always feel like most people find the topic boring. I enjoy it for some reason. There's a geek part of me, but um, I don't talk about it enough, and I really should. But I'm like, no, I don't want to bore these people. They're going to just think I want to sell them insurance. If you all never buy from me, I'm fine. I'm, we're going to, I'm going to still see you next month, the second Saturday. We're going to talk about something else. Um, but when you do have questions, I want you to know you've got a resource. I'll tell you the truth, and then you make the right choice for you. Thank you, Michelle. This has been fantastic. I mean, oh, you well, know, like I said, you know, getting this word out about what's available to us, you know, that's what we want to continue to do, you know, because knowledge is power. 
So we will continue to bring you things that will help you run your business and be uh, and be successful in what you're doing. And having that peace of mind with insurance, you know, that's what insurance does. You know, it gives you a peace of mind and it's something you hope you never have to use, but but we need it. So uh, I wanna thank you guys for joining us. Uh, if you are a patron, this is a recorded session, so it will be posted in the patron community, so you can go back, take a look at it at your leisure, and uh, Michelle is a patron also, but she is so busy that you hardly ever see her in the patron community, so uh, no. best to email her for, yeah. um, for information. But, you know, I, I, I love being part of Notary Gals and working with Michelle because she's just, she's such a professional and she just brings a wealth of information and she's somebody that I've known for years and grown, grown to trust. So, Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. And let me say this to the other patrons who are not here, but will see this in the community. I am now blessed to be able to be working from home. I am more in control of my time. A few of you have reached out to me in the community and outside, and I was not prompt in getting back to you. So uh, if you still need assistance, um, please reach back out and I'll be happy to help. And I look forward to speaking with all of you. Okay, thank um, you everybody. Thank you. Love you guys.